Although the gangway is the most obvious access point to the ship, there are other ways to get on board, including ladders, side ports, or climbing up the mooring ropes. To prevent unauthorized persons boarding, these access points have to be guarded. Exactly how they are guarded depends on the security level. At all security levels, everyone seeking access to the vessel must present an ID and login. At security level one. All access points have to be monitored continuously, and a security lookout and patrol should be posted. At security level two, limit the number of access points. Security lookouts or patrols should be increased, with particular emphasis on restricted areas. At security level three, limit to only one access point. Coordinate with the waterfront facility. To extend access control beyond the immediate area of the ship, and perform waterside boat patrols, use divers to inspect the underwater pier structures both prior to and upon the ship's arrival, and in other necessary situations. CCTV, intruder alarms, and security patrols are all effective measures to monitor areas both on board and surrounding the ship. Earlier, we learned about the restricted areas on board your ship. It's important to note that the vessel's security level will affect how they are guarded. At security level one, the restricted areas should be locked or secured, and personnel should patrol the areas. At security level two, the frequency of personnel patrolling the areas should be increased. And at security level three. Personnel should be posted at the areas continuously. When completing the declaration of security, the ship and port facility security officers agree on the means of communication in case of an emergency. The current security level determines the frequency by which this is checked. They should also specify backup system requirements. At security level one. There are no requirements for communication checks or backup communication, but there must be one method of backup communication and regular communication checks at security level two. The same is true of security level three, though there must be more than one method of backup communication. We've looked at how security levels affect restricted areas and the declaration of security. Now we must consider embarking personnel, as this is the most common way for prohibiting weapons to get onto a ship. At security level one, check tickets, boarding passes, work orders, and ID cards to verify the reason for personnel seeking access to the vessel. Positively identify crew members, passengers, vendors, dock workers, and authorized visitors prior to each embarkation. And cross-reference new crew members with company on signers information. You should also carry out body searches and inspect baggage for prohibited weapons, incendiaries, and explosives on a random basis. You should follow the same procedure at security level two, but with an increased inspection frequency on embarking persons. And at security level three, you should inspect all embarking persons. And escort all persons except crew when on board. Prohibited weapons are not only brought on board by embarking personnel; they are sometimes transported on via cargo during loading or with the ship's stores. In order to avoid weapons entering the ship through the ship's stores, it is recommended that you verify and inspect 25 to 50 percent of ship stores at security level one and two. Increasing this to 100% at security level three, all vessels should be aware of the risk of concealment in stores. But ship and cargo types influence security measures, with container and general cargo vessels generally being more at risk than tankers. When it comes to general cargo ships. You should verify 25 to 50 percent of all non-containerized cargo. Against the cargo manifest at security level one, this increases to 100% for security level two and security level three. On container ships, 
you should verify 100% of the container identification numbers for loading containers, and 25 to 50% of empty containers against the manifest at security level one. You should still verify 100% of loaded containers at security level two, but you should also verify 100% of the empty containers. And the same is true of security level three. With tankers, the increased security levels affect how visitors are treated on board. At security level one, you should confirm that cargo surveyors and similar visitors have positive identification to prove who they are. At security level two, ensure that cargo personnel are not allowed on the tank deck without an escort. At security level three. Cargo personnel should only be allowed on board if their presence is essential.